Did it take a picture or is it recording? It's recording. <laughs> Hi. That's the sort of thing. Editing helps. My name's Jeff Goble and this is an orange shirt blog. I am actually wearing an orange shirt. Cool. Um, I uh, recently, I mean not too recently, but a little while ago, turned 50. And this year, more than previous years, I've been reflecting on what that means. And essentially what that means is that I am an old person. Um, in my lifetime, they changed the senior citizen rule from 65 to 55. Even though people live longer, we can start getting our discount at 55. And that's close when you consider the grand scheme of things. But even that, 50 is over the, over the midlife, because most people don't live to be 100. It is over the, um, what do you call it, middle-aged, because people don't live to be 100. It's definitely over, or at least it used to be over the prime demographic of television, marketing, advertising, movies, pretty much the world doesn't market to people over 50. However, that's changing a little bit because the superstars and the 60-year-old um, men and women, but mostly men, I suppose, in Hollywood are doing lots of things. I mean... There's a lot of action movies with 60-plus-year-old people. Arnold Schwarzenegger is still in an action movie. So it's it's skewing a little bit. Because I, I suppose I was going to say that the over-50s also have more money. But since I'm now in that crowd, I'm realizing my generation doesn't have a lot of money. We relied on our parents having money. And we're not really a saving generation. We're not, we don't have a lot of money in the bank. In my circle of friends, I know very few people financially doing as well as my parents did. And they weren't, you know, wealthy. We were middle class. We bought gadgets, but... Um, so anyway, I'm certainly not. And in a reflective mood where I look back over my life, I did okay, and then I didn't. And gradually had to give up some of the luxuries of middle class to find myself living a middle class life in a lower class income bracket. So it, it started, my, my biggest condo, my nicest living place, was a very large condo in Mississauga when they still made large condos. I'm pretty sure two bedrooms plus den, ginormous living room tiny kitchen, but that didn't bother me so much. I think it had two bathrooms. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, washer, dryer, in-suite, dishwasher, 400 square foot balcony. Yes, you heard that right. Then from there, I moved to a much smaller condo in Toronto. I think the rent was $1,700 a month, um, which was pretty crazy at the time, but it's probably... Uh, well over 2,000 now. And then I started to downsize. I lost a major contract, and instead of making it up, I just moved into a basement of someone else's house where I didn't have to be able to... I even missed rent a few times. I think it caught up, but it wasn't a consistent thing. Then my credit problem started and went into debt. And uh, I worked back a little bit, so that I could eventually move out into a slightly more expensive basement and, and then a slightly more expensive basement. And then two years ago, next month, actually next week, I guess, two year, two year anniversary of living alone for the first time, that's when I started to give things up. Bought my first used car ever uh, with 320,000 kilometers on it when I bought it. <laughs> Now, I'm approaching 400,000 on it. I'll match that uh, next month for sure, unless it dies. Gave up having in-suite laundry for the very first time. I had to go outside my apartment for laundry, but it was still free, just outside the door. Gave up air conditioning for the first time since I was uh, young. Uh, gave up a lot of things. <laughs> this car then, the air conditioner died in it, so I, 
my new house, I have to pay for my laundry. It's still just outside my door. I don't have to go to a laundromat yet, but those were things that were on my list of, you know, I'd made it. I've never used a laundromat in my life. So I'm close now. I've paid for laundry, still never used a laundromat. That might be next. We'll see. Um, the car's going to die soon. But, you know, I reflect back on the, on the life of of an old person and, and it's been fun it's been kind of neat watching the world evolve now when I was young we used to talk about those people that made it to 100 on the news and what they'd see you know wow they were alive before television and before the phone and what a change that must have been and now as I'm passing 50 and a lot of the people that I socialize with are still in their 20s 30s and 40s I'm thinking well you know what my life span of 50 years has seen a lot too. Although I was pretty young, 1963 I think was still black and white TV. Certainly huge TVs compared to today's micro thin LED 50 inch screens that so many people have. As a matter of fact, almost everyone I know has a big screen TV now. Computers, of course, I lived through from the very beginning sold VIC-20s, sold pet computers actually, and uh, 4K, wow, uh, saw the internet, and before the internet, bulletin board systems, modems went from 300 baud to, we were really happy when we could tweak ours to 450, <laughs> and pretty much that was an Ontario thing, I think, or a Canadian thing, the 450 baud. Then they went to 1200 and that was the fastest you could ever get on a phone line. It was not going to be anything faster than 1200 baud. And then 2400 said, came out and they said, well, we figured out a way. But that's the fastest now. That's the limit. And that kept going up and up and up, of course. So now they're still battling over the fastest internet speeds. And I look back and an awful lot of the things that I see wherever I look are younger than me. When you're 50, you can play that game. I'm older than everything here. <laughs> like everything here. This was a field. Now this particular area might not have been a field, but I do get that. I drive around and I, especially when there's young people in the car, and I catch myself saying all the things that parents said when I was young. You know, when we were here, this was a field. And it's true, it was. So it's kind of neat. I've said a few times in the past, one of my expressions is that the best non-religious reason for staying alive is curiosity. And it's kind of true. This is what I think may be one of the first generations uh, that expects the future rather than be surprised by it. You know, before TV was around, TV was like, wow, that's, that's a surprise. And now we're kind of like, well, okay, there hasn't been a lot of involvement in the TV. What's next? Come on, give me that thing. I want this. I want that. How come we don't have flying cars yet? Where are my jetpacks? <laughs> and it's true. I, I really am curious to see where this internet thing is going to go. You know, and where personal communications, when we switched from talking to people to sending texts. Jerry Seinfeld had a great routine in the last week or so. He appeared on the new Tonight Show, second night, and talked about how the second they gave us an option between talking to our friends and sending them a text, we chose the text because we don't really want to hear what they want to say. We just want to send our side. I thought that was funny, but it's very true. So the world changes always. And for some reason, we always think it changes more in our generation than the previous generation. I had one of the last arguments with my dad over that, that I was claiming every generation up until infinity will probably think that theirs is the most change and the ones before didn't. But change is always huge, slow, and gradual. So it, it's been a fun ride. Now, I'm not saying that like I'm going to leave it anytime soon, but uh, it's sometimes it's fun being old. <laughs> sometimes it's scary. So I'm on the way to the last day of my job the last paycheck I will receive from this contract. And I'm not scared, but I should be. I don't have a replacement in place. And 
two months from now or three months from now or less if my car fails and I decide that's a necessity instead of a nicety. We'll see. I don't know what the future holds, but it's worth sticking around for the curiosity. I'm Jeff Goble. This has been an Orange Shirt Car Vlog.